Welcome to Marquee City, a show all about Canada's premier city, Toronto. And today we're going to be covering an icon of the city, the Gooder Hat Building. George Gooderham, the son of William Gooderham, founded the Gooderham and Wards Distillery. And at one point, they were one of the biggest distillers of whiskey in all of North America. The Heritage Building is located on a tri-point in which Front and Wellington meet with church. This unique location gives the building its rare triangular shape. Designed by David Roberts Jr., the son of David Roberts Sr. I know, what a coincidence, right? His father designed the Great Stone Distillery Building in the Distillery District, and his son decided to follow in his footsteps and became the in-house architect for the Gooderham Wards Company. In 1891, George Gooderham wanted a more extravagant head office for his whiskey empire, so he decided to create a building that would later become an icon of the city. This isn't the only famous flat iron building in the world. There's also the famous one in New York City. That one is actually taller than the Gooderham, but this one actually predates uh, the Flatiron in New York by 10 years. So eat your heart out, New York. The cost of construction was about $18,000 in 1892, which roughly calculates to about $456,000 in 2017 money. Which doesn't really seem like much in today's crazy Toronto real estate market, but at the time, it was one of the most expensive commercial buildings in the entire city. So the architectural style of the building is Romanesque with a tinge of Gothic revival. And it sports Ohio red sandstone, which was popular in the 19th century. It's a great marker when you're walking around the city and you can actually spot all the Romanesque and Gothic revival style buildings. The cornice of the building has an intricate design with different geometrical shapes. And now you're probably wondering, what the hell is a corniche? Corniche is Italian for ledge, which is pretty much fancy crown molding for the exterior of the building. The entrance on the north side is also fashioned with Romanesque crown molding and floral leaf patterns around an OG arch. You mispronounce it, it's not pronounced OG arch, it's pronounced OG arch. It isn't an original gangster arch. It's the, it isn't that kind of show. But if you notice over here, the arch actually rounds up. Usual, usual arches usually round out like this, but this arch actually goes up and into a point and ends and comes down again. So this is actually the first building in Toronto to have an Otis elevator, which was a manually operated crank uh, elevator where you would go in and you would ask somebody, oh, I want to go to the second floor. And somebody would go into the elevator and manually operate it. By using this crank This is way before the time of modern elevators where we just press a button and we just go up and down. And to this day, we still have a guy that manually operates an elevator over here. So like this was this building was actually like part of history as the first of this technology to happen. Interesting fact, there was an underground tunnel under the Gooderham building, across the street that led to the Toronto Bank building, which is now known as the Toronto Dominion Bank. Funny enough, he also owned the Toronto Bank building, which made it easier for it for them to transport their money without it being stolen. Also get this, Gooderham was such a baller that he had a vault on every floor on the Gooderham building. So in 1952, they decided to vacate this building and go to new headquarters. And in 1975, they made this into actually a National Heritage Site of Canada. And to commemorate it becoming a National Heritage Site, they decided to draw a mural on the west side of the building. So they hired Derek Poisson to create the I still don't understand how it's pronounced. Okay, so it basically means optical illusion in French. Yeah. If you hadn't noticed, the middle row windows are actually real windows. They're not painted on like the ones on the left side or the right side. And this mural actually depicts the Perkins building, which is right across the street. 
So that's why it's called the obstacle. Don't worry, I'm not gonna try to pronounce it in French again. <laughs> I'll save you that embarrassment. <laughs> so today the building is a famous tourist spot and actually has an old English pub in the basement called the Flatiron and Perkin. Thank you guys for watching our first ever video. And we here at Markey City love this town. And we love to cover architecture, urban design, and transportation. So if you're a big, if you're an urban nerd like us, please like and subscribe to our videos. If you want to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, you can follow us at Markey underscore city. And if you want to fo personally follow me, you can follow my Instagram at Zade Opal. Or if you want to follow my Twitter, it's at Zade underscore Opal. And I will see you guys in another time and in another place.